What's up everyone? Welcome to First Kids City Online. I'm Nathan. And I'm Emily. We are so excited to worship with you and your entire family today. We're gonna be praising God together, diving into God's word and having some fun as well. If you have bread and juice available for our time of communion, you can go ahead and get that ready right now. If you don't have bread and juice, don't worry. Whatever you have in your kitchen is gonna be just fine. We're gonna take the Lord's Supper together in just a few minutes. Right now, let's take a quick look at what we're studying this month in First Kid City. Our theme is make waves. We are created in God's image and God sent Jesus to show us the best way to be human. But God knew that we would need some help too. So that's why he sent us the Holy Spirit. With the power of the Spirit, we can produce fruit that points others to Jesus. First Kid City, we study a life app every month. A life app is what God is doing in you to change the world around you. And this month, our life app is Make Waves. What you do today can change the world around you. Living your life for God makes a major impact in your life and in the lives of other people. So jump in and make waves for God today. One way to make waves is by being faithful. God is so faithful to us and we can choose to be faithful to Him by choosing His way instead of our own. When we are faithful to God, we can shine His light to others. Another thing that we love to do at First Kids City is memorize God's Word. In this month, we're studying Galatians 5, 22 through 23a. Let's read it together. The fruit the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, and peace. It is patient and kindness and goodness. It is being faithful and gentle and having control of oneself. Great job. Spend some time today highlighting this verse in your own Bible. That way you can find it again later. Now, I'm super excited because guess what's next? It's game time. Welcome back to game time. I'm Sydney. And I'm Josh. And today we're having a puzzle race. Awesome. So all you need is a partner and two puzzles. So what you're going to do is you're going to have a race between the both of you to see who can finish the puzzle first. Are you ready? Awesome. Three, two, one, go. I'm so bad at puzzles. <laughs> it's okay, though. I think I can. Oh, that one's definitely a corner, because look at it. Look at it. It's got the letters. That's how I know. Um. Um. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, wait. Uh, yep. You can do this. That one was. This one's it. Josh struggling. I can't find a piece. This is our time. Oh, this is it. it. I found it. Oh no. It's fine. I found it. Oh found no. It. Can I this one? No. <laughs> Stay with my puzzle. Keep your pieces. Oh uh, yes. Oh, I thought you Josh finished. is going down. I thought you finished. I was like, what? Josh is going down. No, I'm not. He's no, I'm not. Stop making noise. No, I'm not. It's okay. You can admit it. He's going down. No, I'm not. Here we go. No, I'm not. Oh. Oh yes. I'm missing side pieces. Oh yes. I'm missing yes. side pieces. Oh my gosh. Ah. My puzzle won't stay together. Ah. I don't know where that one goes. Where does that go? Okay. What? What? Yes. Yes. Doesn't make any sense. What? <laughs> I just have to pick a different one. It's me. It's me. No, it's me. It's definitely me. Yep. Where's it go? Where does this go? Ah. Ah. What's no. happening? Okay, wait, 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 wait. I found it. I found it. I found it. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. I'm done. No! <laughs> My dinosaur masterpiece. Let's just take a look real quick. The, the dinosaurs are amazing. Second of all, awesome job, Josh. Even though your puzzle isn't finished, we'll finish it later. Anyways, if you played with us today, be sure to share photos or videos right here in the link. And let's get ready for worship. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get ready to worship. Searching, your love was never far. You made a way to get to me. You were the whisper leading me to your heart. Forever I belong to you. Now I can see clearly why God you for me. You won't let go. Your love won't let me down. And I know it's true. Yeah, I know. I believe in you, hold it on. 
Continue our time of worship today by taking communion. If you don't have your bread and juice ready or whatever you have available, go ahead and prepare that right now. For thousands of years, God's people have gathered together to take a communion meal. During communion, it's important that we remember to do two things, remember and celebrate. On the night before Jesus was arrested, he gathered his disciples together for the Passover meal. But as they were eating, he did something a little out of the ordinary. He took some unleavened bread, broke it into a bunch of pieces, and passed it out to his friends. He told them the bread was his body, and they should eat it in remembrance of him. Then he took a cup and told them this was his blood of the covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This seemed kind of odd, but Jesus was starting a new revolution. On the day when Jewish people gathered together, to celebrate and remember their escape from slavery at the hands of the Egyptians, Jesus was starting a new day, a day when all people would be free from the slavery of sin and death. In a few short hours, Jesus would be arrested and crucified. He would get the punishment for the sins that we committed. It was a terrible thing, but because of what Jesus did, we no longer have to be separated from God. We are free to live with him wholly and completely. We remember the life that Jesus led, how He never sinned, His amazing teachings and miracles, and we celebrate how He died for our sins and three days later rose again in the resurrection, defeating sin and death forever. And all of God's people to this day gather together to share this meal as one family. If you would like to remember and celebrate Jesus with us today, we invite you to take communion at home right now. One of the most important things you can do to love Jesus is to love God's heart. Here at First Kids City, that's just how we talk about prayer. Prayer is simply sharing your heart with God and letting Him share His heart with you. It's like talking to a close friend or a relative. Today, we are going to pray together as a family. I'm going to say the prayer for us, and when I'm finished, we will all say amen together, which means I agree. I encourage you to get into a posture of prayer at home right now. The position of our bodies often reflects the position of our hearts toward God. So feel free to get down on your knees, lay down on the floor, stand with your hands reaching toward God, or even just fold your hands and close your eyes. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, today we come before you in worship, and we thank you for everyone tuning in today, worshiping with us. We ask your blessing be on all of us as we dive into your word today. Open our eyes to your truth, and may we learn to love like Jesus. And all God's kids say, Amen. Now, let's get ready to hear a message from God's Word. Hey, everyone.
everyone, I'm Haley. Who's up for a swim? There's nothing I like better on a hot summer day than taking a dip in the local pool. That's another place where you can really make waves. Because what you do today can change the world around you. You can make waves in the water, sure, by splashing around a lot, but you can also make waves with people by showing things like kindness, gentleness, and faithfulness. I've loved going to the pool for as long as I can remember, even before I learned how to swim. When you don't know how to swim, the pool can be scary, but I knew I could count on my arm floaties to keep me from sinking. <laughs> they work better in a bigger pool. It was nice to have a little help before I learned how to swim on my own, but even today when I'm out in deep water, I can count on a life vest to help keep me safe. Even if you're an excellent swimmer, a life vest will have your back if something unexpected happens. And if you're in a real emergency, there's always a life preserver. Oh, first try. <laughs> when you're out in the water and you're worried you might sink, you can totally count on any of these things. In today's story, we'll hear about two friends, David and Jonathan, who could totally count on each other. They were faithful, and I wasn't really that faithful when I said first try. <laughs> There's always a life preserver. Oh, I feel better getting that off my chest. Whew, yeah, feels good. I'll see you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Jonathan and David couldn't have grown up more differently. Jonathan was the son of King Saul. David, on the other hand, was just an ordinary kid from Bethlehem, the youngest of eight brothers. David spent long hours alone as a shepherd. He made up songs to play on his harp and grew strong defending the sheep from wild animals. But things began to change quickly for David when God sent the prophet Samuel to Bethlehem. God was displeased with King Saul and wanted Samuel to choose a new king. When Samuel saw David, God spoke. Get up and anoint him. This is the one. Though David wasn't anything more than a shepherd boy yet, he was sent to the battle lines where his older brothers and King Saul faced the Philistine army and the giant Goliath. Choose one of your men, have him come down and face me. <laughs> Through God's power, David faced Goliath with five smooth stones and a slingshot. Goliath was killed and the Philistines were defeated. King Saul was so impressed, he invited David to come live in the palace and help lead his army. This is where David and Jonathan met. Hey, I'm Jonathan, King Saul's son. Um, David, Jesse's son. Can I show you around? Uh, sure, uh, I mean, I've never been inside a palace. Dad's told me all about you. You fought Goliath with no armor. <laughs> well, it didn't actually fit. Look, if, if you're going to live with us and help lead the army and everything, you can't dress like a shepherd. Here, I want you to have my robe. Really? We'll be like brothers. You take my sword, too. And my bow. And my belt. Wow, I... Thank you. As David made the palace his new home, the two young men became best friends. King Saul often sent David out with the army. And David was so successful in battle, Saul gave him a high rank. D-A-B-I-D, -D. yes, he's the one for me, me. go, David! Oh, yeah. oh, it go. The people loved David so much that King Saul became jealous. Instead of celebrating David's success, he flew into a violent rage and several times tried to kill David. Jonathan too could easily have become envious of David. 
After all, Jonathan was supposed to be the next king. But instead, Jonathan stayed faithful to their friendship and protected David. My father is looking for a chance to kill you. Find a place to hide and stay there. I'll speak to him. I'll wait for you to tell me what to do. Jonathan pleaded with King Saul. Don't do anything to harm David. He's helped you. Why would you kill him without reason? Oh, all right. I won't put him to death. Several times, Saul promised to spare David. But every time, the king broke his promise and plotted to go after David again. What have I done? Why is he trying to kill me? I don't know. I'll do anything to help you. Together, the friends made a plan for David to hide during an important festival to determine how angry Saul was and whether David could come back to the palace. Whatever happens, always be kind to me as long as I live. And never stop being kind to my family, even when the Lord has destroyed all your enemies. Promise? I promise. David went and hid while Jonathan returned to the palace and the king's feast. Where is David? Why hasn't he been here? He asked to go see his family. No, oh, I know you're on David's side. You should be ashamed. You'll never be king as long as he lives. He must die. Jonathan's heart sank. He knew that David would never be safe again as long as King Saul was alive. The next morning, Jonathan took his bow out to the field to shoot, part of the arranged plan. A servant came with him. The arrow went far beyond you, didn't it? Hurry up, run fast, don't stop. David knew this meant that King Saul was still very angry. After the servant left, David slipped out from behind the stone where he was hiding. Jonathan? David! The friends hugged and wept knowing they might never see each other again. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we've promised to be friends. The Lord is a witness between you and me and between my family and your family forever. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye. David left to find a new hiding place and Jonathan returned to the palace. King Saul never stopped chasing David, but Jonathan stayed faithful to his friend. David was deeply saddened when he learned that both Jonathan and King Saul had been killed in battle. Years later, when David became king, he remembered his promise to Jonathan. Is anyone left from the royal house of Saul? If there is, I want to be kind to him because of Jonathan. A son of Jonathan is still living. Both of his feet were hurt so that he can't walk. David had Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, now a young man, brought to the palace. I'm ready to serve you. Don't be afraid. You can be sure that I will be kind to you because of your father, Jonathan. I'll give back to you all the land that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and I'll always provide what you need. Thank you, thank you. David faithfully cared for Mephibosheth and his family for the rest of their lives, just as he had promised his friend, Jonathan. David and Jonathan were faithful friends. They could count on each other in good times and bad. David was even a faithful friend after Jonathan died. David kept his promise and took care of Jonathan's son. You can show faithfulness too, by being the kind of person others can count on. That means keeping your promises, doing what you'll say you'll do. It means not talking bad about people behind their backs. And there are other ways to be faithful. If someone's scared of trying something new, you can help encourage them. If something unexpected happens to someone, you can have their back. There are a lot of things you can do to be faithful. Small things. It's not like you have to save someone's life, but you could. Faithfulness can spread like a wave. So if you want friends you can count on, you should be someone you can count on. Here's the one thing to remember today. Be faithful so others can count on you. And don't forget, God is always faithful. When you need help, ask God. God gives you the Holy Spirit when you put your trust in Jesus. Jesus truly is a life preserver. Oh, 
See you next time. Hey everyone, it is summertime and you know what that means. Summer life is in full swing here at First Kids City. We have all sorts of camps and events going on all summer long that we would love for you to be a part of. You can check out all of that information, the events and the dates on our website under the events page.